Welcome back to another fantastic install video. Well, our first fantastic install video about the kill shot. We got our C10 here. We got her all stripped down. It was a mess. It was a test test mule. We're going to try to clean it up a little bit. But first of all, we want to do an install video on a kill shot and explain the process. We do have some previous work already done. The fuel system. There's an O2 sensor in the pipe somewhere. But we're going to we're going to cover that as in placement and kind of how the method that we went with stuff like the fuel system and our selection on wiring. Already got a nice relay in here, and um, let's just kind of get into it. You know, it's a small block 350. I mean, it's in several of our other videos, but we haven't really done our diligence in providing you with a really solid install video. So, I mean, why not, right? I mean, it's what we do here, so... We're in a sheet metal restoration shop. The fans are on. It's 200 degrees here. Uh, it's a good day to break a sweat. So let's go install a kill shot. So, all right, we got everything unboxed. We got it laid out. We got the wiring harness, the handheld, the ECU, and the throttle body. We're still going to do time and control with this as it goes. We already have some work done to this truck because, you know, it's, it's our test mule as it goes. The fuel system is already done. It's on a return style regulator, which which we'll zoom in here in a minute. We'll talk about it. I already have a relay wired in for the fuel pump, and we're already running our Gambler Series Hall Effect distributor. We're going to be running time and control on it. We have a coil mounted to the firewall. This is stuff that don't take a lot of imagination to actually get done. It's all user end user preference of where you're going to put this stuff and how you're going to get it set in. The distributor's stabbed in at 15 degrees before top dead center. We've already verified that because we've had previous systems on there, but We'll we'll make another separate video on all that magic that goes on. It's it's really not that hard. It's just a little bit of finesse. Um, when it comes to wiring principles, we'll get to that stuff as we do this install, explaining why we're putting wires where we're putting them and where where not to put them. Honestly, because we get a lot of phone calls about people wiring up some wild stuff and breaking our stuff. That's that's not super great. So hopefully uh, hopefully there's some good education in this. So. If you just turn your focus over here to Defender, we'll talk about what I got going on. So we already have some work done to this particular vehicle. Like I said, it was our test pig. Um, we got the distributor in. We got the uh, the fuel system in. Weirdly enough, this is an older fuel system of ours. It was uh, like the first one, like our first prototype system that we was uh, messing with. And we decided to put it on this truck because that's what this truck does. Now we need to clean it up and get it ready for some shows because... It's still a pretty nice truck. We just got to get it there. Get, well, get it back there. When we bought it, it was nice, and then they let it to me, and, you know, it's like that sometimes. Anywho, so on this relay down here, um, this is for the fuel pump. I know I got some splice connectors on there. It is what it is, but uh, the fuel pump we're using, it draws right at 20 amps for what it is, and that's a bit much for our system. So, you know, I went ahead and just went straight to the battery with it. I'm using our ACES system to trigger the fuel pump relay to turn the fuel pump on, um, which which is going to send some pressure up through here. This is a return style setup. So it's gravity fed to the back of the pump. It comes through the filters and lines and all that. It comes up to here where our throttle body is going to be. I'll just get the fuel out of there. And then it's going to go through the throttle body, through this return line to the regulator where the pressure is regulated. So it's, we're going to set it to 43, P, 43 and a half PSI, and then out, outside of that, it returns everything back to the tank. Now, I know on this on this style, the only restriction we got is about maybe 2 PSI fuel line restriction, and that is literally the surface uh, friction of the inside of the fuel line itself back into the tank because it takes a hard 90 at the tank. So it's about 2 PSI of return pressure. That's something you need to take into consideration when you're setting up your fuel system is how much return line restriction do you have, what size lines do you have, you know, just normal fuel system stuff. But, yeah, it's a return style. Uh, our distributor, like I said, it's a gambler-style distributor. It's, you know, over here, we already have a... I have a little breakout weather pack harness that's kind of kind of in there. It's not hooked up. I just left it here because I was using it for something else. And it's it's pretty awful looking. I'm going to clean this up and actually attach it appropriately when we do the install. Uh, we already have our throttle cable. It's, it's not preferred. It's a little too long, but we'll be putting a better one in there. Like I said, that's the original equipment when we got the vehicle. We are going to be changing the intake at some point. Better valve covers. We're going to put a different distributor in and go with a different combination. It's going to make a fantastic video because we do have good intakes for these. That's the uh, 4150 style flange. Um, that's, you know, it's not multi-port like the rest of our intakes. It's actually like a carbureted application. If you're going to do this classic small block, you want the ACES intake and you're going to be putting our stuff on top of it. 
it's going to look a lot better than, you know, brand E as it goes, which everybody's owned one of these if you built a motor. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get a throttle body on there and start wiring some stuff up. I, uh, I'm looking forward to this. We're going to have this thing running in just an hour or two, really. So, well, yeah, that's it's really not hard. It's a few wires. We'll walk through it. Let's do it. So we got our kill shot out of the kit. It's uh, This was a used one, so, you know, bear with me here. We didn't want to, like, rob somebody of having a fresh system. But if you're doing a install on, like, an NA motor like this, notice the lack of turbochargers, superchargers, or anything else, you need this port open right here. This is our boost reference block-off port, but for NA applications and turbo or supercharger blow-through applications, meaning the pressure's coming through the body, this needs to stay open so that the map sensor can tell what the engine's doing. So we'll leave this out, and we'll go ahead and just stick this on here. The uh, Our flange here, we got a bit of a spacer because we're using an adapter. This isn't our ACEs intake, but it's got a nice gasket. It's in good health, nothing weird. It's free and clear of de debris. So we'll just go ahead and just plop it on here. It's on. We're going to bolt it up and uh, hook up the linkage. This is this is some little bit of homemade linkage right here because we, uh, we want to save putting our throttle bracket on the aces one when we change the intake out so we're just going to hook it up to how it was before and uh go give it a drive and send it but yeah let's uh let's go ahead and bolt this down and uh, start plugging some stuff in Right, so we got the thing bolted down, and for the torque spec on this, uh, we can look it up, but it's a standard torque. It's really, you want to fill the gasket seat well as it goes all the way around. You don't want to, like, load one side up and then try to do the other because you'll break these ears off. This is just cast aluminum after all, so no need to destroy it. I've had a couple people do it, but the linkage, this is kind of some custom stuff here that come with the truck. Not a fan of it, but it's good enough for testing on this, but we are going to, like I said, we're going to convert over to a better bracket. The fuel system on this, I mean, this is uh, this right here is the return side, and it don't matter whether this is the in or the out because the way our throttle body is laid out internally wise, the uh, the fuel system is all in it. It has a transfer tube right here in the middle on this back side, so all this will be full of fuel and pressurized as it's restricted through the regulator. So you can go in, out, in, out, out, in, however you like. So. We'll go ahead and get that out the way. This is my brake booster port. I just plug that in. Yep. This right here is supplying manifold vacuum to my brake booster so my power brakes actually work. The rest of these are just capped off. They're just, you know, they're not really doing anything. If it was running like an HEI or a vacuum um, advanced distributor, we'd be using this boost reference port back. I mean, not boost reference port. This ported vacuum back here. Boost reference port's up here, but... This one right here runs off to your distributor, in case you wanted to know. If you're running a vacuum distributor, this guy right here. So, it's uh, the port for that's actually back here in this uh, fourth barrel. There's a little hole just above the throttle plate, so as the air increases velocity, it'll, uh, you know, start to activate this. Anyways, we'll go ahead and hook this other fuel line up. These are just AN fittings. These are just... AN6 barbed fittings on this particular fuel system. They're already beat up, so I'm not going to use like a special wrench or anything. But if you have brand new fittings, use the right wrench. Don't be like me. Just one little, uh, you got to fill a seat. There you go. That's uh, tidied up. We got our brake booster hooked up. Explain some vacuum ports. Throttle body's mounted down. The fuel system's hooked up. We really need to start running the, um, yeah, we need to start running the wiring harness now. We'll go over the uh, the connections and how I kind of got that set up. But yeah, we're what, four wires and two connections away. So we're going to mount our ECU here on this vehicle. We're mounted on the fender. Um, we really should be, if we're doing a super clean install, which we will be doing another install on this, but it'll be with the intake like I would mentioned before. But we're going to be putting it inside of the vehicle, which is much more preferred. That way we got minimal amount of wiring outside into the engine bay. And all the business action, relays and fuses and such, can connections will be inside. This will also, moving it inside will help protect the ECU against the environment, even though it's very well sealed up. It's in cast aluminum. It's a great heat sink. But having it under the engine, in the engine bay itself, it's, you know, it has its own hazards. So you want to keep it away from the engine as much as you can. 
not for any RMI, EMI issues, but more like it's just a cleaner install. You don't have extra stuff flashing and going on underneath the hood. So on this one, though, for now, we're putting it on the fender. We got the wiring harness kind of already laid out about roughly where I really want it. Uh, well, that's upside down. Like that, right there. It's laying up here on top of the brake booster. This is the, uh, this is the factory bundle mm, sleeve thing. But yeah, I had to find this. This was hard to get. So we're going to remount this thing. We're going to run some of this harness through here. And you can see my already got my, my power, my ground, my fuel pump, and my keyed ignition switch wires already laid out. So let's, um, yeah, let's just route this around a little bit more and we'll get over here. All right, so in our engine bay here, you can see I'm trying not to make too much of a shadow on this, but I've already got some predetermined wires. I use the same wire colors out of a, another harness I had laying around, but these actually already run. This goes to the fuel pump relay. This goes to the negative post of the battery terminal. This main positive, it goes directly to the battery. And this is our good, clean switch 12 volt source it will. When you hit the key, it'll send 12 volts down to it to activate the ECU. So that's why I already kind of got it in a loom, like I said, from a previous system. Here's the wires, they all color match. So it's just a matter of putting them together. Now, the reason I laid this harness out is because we got a coil connection here. We got our point wire right here which this is important for, like we're using a CDI box. We got the VR wire here. So you see it kind of already, it's right there at the distributor if it was using a magnetic distributor. Also our PIC connector, which goes to the throttle body, is laid out in a good spot. So we got all the components we need roughly where we need them at without too much fuss. So we just need to make them look nice and tidy, make some wiring connections, and uh, kind of get everything set up. We're actually... That's not a lot of things to connect to make this thing go. So let's get it laid out and tidied up, and we'll get back to this whenever we uh, or hook it up the distributor, explaining the Gambler style distributor and how it works with this particular system. Right on. So we got our harness. I've got our loose harnesses over here. Um, this is a harness now. So I got my positive, my negative, my fuel pump lead wire, and my switch 12 volt. You can kind of see they, they go off in this direction. But I put a nice piece of split loom on there, taped it up. And these are the Amazon special uh, weather pack connectors because I want to keep it tidy for in case we do like another system on this. It's like an easy swap. We just unplug it, plug a new one back in, all that. On the, on the kill shot harness side, I went and put a four pin weather pack connector. Got everything lined up pretty well. So this is more of, we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna hide it in this loom. I found a couple screws to put this back on. It's, uh, it's looking real tidy now. So let's just go ahead and connect this. Just a quick little push. Nothing crazy there. And we get our main harness and just kind of set it in here. You know, cause this is, this is gonna ultimately just snap in place when we get everything run. We still got the loose lead harness we're going to have to hook up. This right here is going to, we're going to be tapping into like the V main and the coil input wire, which is where we're going to get our uh, RPM signal from our distributor. But we'll shoot that here in just a bit. This is, uh, this will be in here too. It'll be kind of be pretty tidy, but it's going to go in this direction down here to this other weather pack connector for the distributor. This is just a breakout connector. So nothing, nothing too crazy here. Only have to hook up. These two wires, one sensor, one V main. This is kind of a jank setup, but we'll clean it up and make it way, way better. So let's just uh, let's see what else we got to plug in here. We got the harness. I got to clean this up. Was using it for a different application. We're not going to use the VR wire because we're using a Hall Effect distributor. We need to plug the coil in, and then figure out what where this is best going to lay out. So let's just let's get that over there and see what it looks like. Anywho. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to get up on here. We got this dressed up a bit. These are pretty prepped. This is going to be a couple connections. Real easy stuff. We'll just knock that out. Um, this is going to be kind of up here, so I need to figure out the best path of whether I'm going up or over or across or what have you not. So we got that. We got this. Might need to 
pull a little more. Yeah. It's going to kind of come in here. The cool thing about our systems, you don't have to worry about electromagnetic interference, radio frequency, anything like that so much. Because ours is pretty dialed in for that. But we're probably going to need to go, not so much here, we'll probably have to go down here to get this really, yeah, that'll probably work out a lot better. So we'll be running this up underneath this fuel line. I just don't want to stress any wiring, you know? I don't want to make bad choices as it goes. So yeah, all this, we're going to take this one as it goes off to the driver's side. This is our O2 sensor wire. Chevrolet. Let's see what we got here. Fuel, we're not using our fuel connector. We'll probably get that, clean it up at some point, and kind of pin it back. This will be our coolant temp sensor. It's got a lot of real estate to go because they're in so many different places. Some place, some cars are up here on the radiator. Some they're over here on the manifold. So the ours is on the manifold. Let's run it under here. You got to make sure to loop it around everything you don't want it to be on. There we go. Hit that. This just plugs into the coolant temp sensor that we got in here. Not a massive deal. We do got extra hose here or extra wire. So we'll we'll tidy that up a little bit and make it nice. And we still got a bit of a wiring mess back here. We're just going to tidy that up because we don't really need to film tidying up wiring. That's kind of a anybody does that deal. But yeah, we're looking good. We're looking real good. We got our connections for our handheld. I'm actually going to put a new handheld in this, so I'll be pulling these back through. Not a big deal. And, uh, yeah, we're 10 minutes-ish, maybe 10 minutes worth of work left to do to make this thing actually start. So, huh. we've bolted the throttle body down. We got the fuel hooked up. We got the harness hooked up. We did the main connector, which contains the positive, the negative, straight to the battery. We got the fuel pump down here to the relay that drives the fuel pump in the tank. We got the switch 12 volt, which goes inside to our other relay, which it's, it's a little bit more of a complicated setup, but that was kind of a custom thing for this truck because we couldn't find a good clean 12 volt source. So we just put in an extra relay. We got it tapped into the battery lead. It's, it's, it's actually a nice clean source of voltage. That way it doesn't kill the handheld. It doesn't cause any issues with the ECU. There's no weird interference, no spiking voltage. Yeah, this is, this is not bad. One, two, three, four wires, one, two connectors, really outside of the kill shot system, some fuel distributor in time doing a good job. I mean, it's so easy. But yeah, hopefully you guys are watching along here. So yeah, let's get on uh let's get on to the next bit of it. All right, nice key cycle. We're looking good. It's connected. So we can verify our parameters here. We got 12 volts on our battery. It's a fairly fresh battery. Um, judging by our altitude, this uh, map reading, this is in PSI. This is a PSIA or absolute. So it's actually reading what pressure altitude we're in right now. So these are calibrated from zero to our altitude or our atmospheric pressure being 14.2 PSI. So that's what we're breathing. That's what we live in, all that stuff. If you see this number, don't be scared of it. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Let's see, injection loop, it's it's actually that hot. That's why we're sweating here. IAC, it's open, so there's, because it's a mild cam, it has a little bit more airflow. This IAC position, it's opened more than you'd normally see, so not a big deal there. AFR, that's just a redundant value. It's reading in a table in the background until the O2 sensors get up to temperature and start reading, and then you'll see that change in a little bit. Ignition advanced, this is when we hit the key and it's cranking, it's going to be cranking for 15 degrees advanced. Pulse width, this is kind of how much how much fuel that it's initially going to be putting in during cranking. There's like a little table modifier in the in the background parameters that adds extra fuel during cranking to help get it started. And the initial fire up is, is kind of a cooling effect in a weird way too. But after it's running, you should see it running around 2, 2.3, which when we get it up and running here in a minute, after I tuck all these wires around and, and get them away from all this, uh, we'll show all these parameters in the initial startup and what adjustments. It's just smart to do, you know, IAC adjustments, fuel table offsets, and all that. So, yeah. And because of 
you know, the, the, the setup on this is not your normal setup because we are using a Hall Effect distributor, which is fine to do. We could use a CD box if you wanted to. There's a, a huge amount of combinations you could do. A coil negative, an HEI setup. But, like, if you order this top-end kit, this kill shot with distributor and coil and all that, um, they come with a magnetic distributor, which will be plugged in with that VR wire on the main harness. Uh, it'd be set up as magnetic in there, so if we was... If we was to change this from that, that Hall Effect distributor to a magnetic one, we'd have to go back through the parameters and select it as magnetic. Of course, those require it to be mechanically locked out before you install them to, you know, accurately do the timing control. Not a big step, nothing crazy, nothing different. It stabs in the same way. It lines up kind of in the same manner. So we'll, we'll probably do some videos on different style of distributors and how they install after all this as well. So now we kind of got this set up, and we know everything's connecting fine. It's all good. The harness is kind of laid out where it needs to be. I need to throw some more mounting screws in this ECU right here. Actually, I'm probably going to take these out and put some rubber feet in there to isolate it from vibration because it is on a thin metal structure. Um, I just need to tidy up the harness the rest of the way, run this, run this lead right here for the handheld through the firewall over there. Um, I'm probably going to piggyback my, my tuning cable in here too for just, just for our laptop testing down the road on this. And I got an extra one floating around, so it's not a big deal for me. But yeah, let's tidy up some wiring harness and uh, fire this thing up and uh, go for a drive. All right, so I took a little time and um, captured a few of the wires that I want out of the loose lead harness. But I went ahead and ran them out here to my loose lead connector. I, this is just a weather pack connector, one of the Amazon special ones I got, but it plugs into to R3 wire connector. So the ground, I actually got to the back of the cylinder head. It was a really good source of ground. I used a V main to power this distributor, this Hall Effect distributor, and the center wire, which is green on the connector side for the distributor, I used a gray one because this is going to a gray tack in. So this is V main, ground, tack in, and the only other wire out of the loose lead harness is the brown one that's running down to my factory tachometer that's inside the vehicle. I already have it, so I might as well use it. I uh, incidentally just shuffled this. Don't mind this. This is this is here until I relocate the O2 sensor, so, but we'll, um, we'll get a shot of the O2 sensor as well. I'll explain to you guys kind of the positioning of it, but this thing is, this thing's ready to start, so... Yeah, let's uh let's hit the key and fire it up, and uh, we'll make sure all the adjustments and fueling and everything is uh, is looking pretty good. I mean, these things come with a pretty good base in them, so normally not too much to dial in or out. It is a mild cam engine, so it's gonna it's gonna run a little bit weird, but I mean that's just because it's got a big old fat cam in it. So let's fire it up and see if we need to adjust anything else. And uh, I think we're looking pretty good here. Now, naturally, you have to do fuel and IX sometimes, but that's just small parameters to adjust. Let me get started. All right, so we're going to fire this thing up. Uh, it's the first fire up. It's hot here. It's lovely. The sun's shining. I'm excited. So we've already we've already done the setup wizard. we got to set the CDI, which is our Hall effect. So, I mean, that, all the parameters there. And uh, we'll see if we got to mess with anything. So here we go. Let's see. Oh. Activate Chevy. Well, as you can see in here, it's running. So we'll let it get up to temperature, and uh, I think it'll be all right. It needs to, we need to go drive it a little bit, but yeah. Not bad for a first fire up, I guess, right? Kill shot. So there's our first fire up. Um, I like it. You know, handful of wires, a little bit of tucking some stuff away. We we'll use use some aftermarket connectors because this is more this is going to be more of a permanent install for our test vehicle here, but we're going to get it prettied up for some shows. Um, it's just you know we're going to next video do some handheld adjustments and just really refine it and get some road tuning on it. Uh, we still got to do the trans control install. Uh, that'll be one of the next videos we do as well. So we're using a 4L80 in this particular vehicle. We're going to use our uh, quick draw transmission controller. I'm really excited about putting that together because then we'll be able to actually go out and take this thing for a cruise and get all that good road data and see where it's learning at. But we're going to walk through that when it gets to the handheld portion of adjustments and the, the laptop tuning software and really getting what it takes to adjust one of these to be just perfect on the road. You know, a lot of the times we have good success out of stock and mild engines for the kill shot, put them on, very small adjustments, 
and send it. We didn't even need to adjust the IAC on this when we started it up because after it got to temperature, the values, it was like an 18 on the IAC and we haven't fiddled with nothing yet, which is the best part because this truck's set. We had to take a day just to charge the battery to make sure it was up so we could start this thing today. And it's, it's not too bad. It's a pretty easy kit. I've done a lot of this stuff in the aftermarket, and this is the easiest one I've encountered so far that has given me the, boat mess, the best success for installing it, firing it up, adjustability, and all that. And it's affordable. So even, you know, even with normal people money, you can go buy the thing for your project, put it on, and be successful at having a nice install. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoy the information we're given here today. If there's any more information that you need, just make the suggestions in the videos, and we don't mind coordinating that to put it together for you. I mean, we're here doing this for the people. Otherwise, I wouldn't even do this, probably. I just feel, actually, everybody here at ACES, we all feel so passionate that we choose to be here and help develop this kind of stuff for you. So, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you soon.